I have some longs for tomorrow. I have some shorts for tomorrow. I have kind of a bit of everything. But if we go into day two again, and there is no commitment to one side of the market, you're going to find yourself in something called the chop side, which everybody is not. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. I hope everybody is uh, doing okay. So I, ha I had a very frustrating uh, session to kind of start my week. Um, let's talk about it real quick, right? Really quick. So if you guys watched the nightly video from uh, over the weekend, right? We had our first close over the 50-day moving average, uh, which was kind of a big deal uh, for the technology sector. So when we opened down this morning, um, I wanted to always, I, I never throw away my game plan. It doesn't make sense because openings, um, pre-market futures, whatever the case may be, is not an in indicative way to kind of look at, you know, failure or success of the stock market. Market, you know, changes on a dime and up openings go red, red openings go green and everything else in between. So when we opened lower today, uh, my initial comments were, well, the fact that the bulls reclaimed the 50 day moving average. And if you look at pre-market, a lot of things were pretty flat, right? Considering we were down 50, 60 handles on, on the NASDAQ, it wasn't really, there wasn't really a lot of stuff that was, that was down a lot. Uh, Amazon had a really uh, good positive, um, Notes coming out of Morgan Stanley talked about a five six thousand uh, handle. Uh, everything was down like a buck, you know, fifty cents, a dollar, nothing, right? Nothing. So I said, you know what? Let's give it the first thirty minutes. Let's see exactly if the bulls can go red to green, start reclaiming Friday's price action, and see if the last two days of the of the week was going to manifest into kind of a bigger stretch. That didn't happen, right? That absolutely didn't happen. And once we started selling off, this is about. You know, this is 9.30. I wanted to give the bulls kind of the doubt. Around 10.30, you can clearly see nothing was rallying. Matter of fact, not only was nothing rallying, you started seeing some pretty good, you know, pretty good reach, you know, retracements from Friday's channels. But the, the hardest part about a retracement from Friday's channel, you're always expecting that some sort of rising support is going to hold it and they're going to snap back. And by 10.30, we were about $3 below that 326 level, which is the 50-day moving average, and going lower and lower and lower. The problem with the sell-off, well, I don't want to use the word sell-off, but the problem with the back test this morning around 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, right, three hours in a row, it was very methodical, drip, 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 drip. And by 12.30, nothing was rallying, like absolutely nothing was rallying. And I said, but this is so odd. Not only are things not rallying, but they're not really going down aggressively. In other words, we're not seeing any really big call or put activity yet, right? We haven't seen anything. I go, this is very, very odd. And then slowly but surely, you started seeing some pretty big bets coming in on Tesla to the downside. Uh, June, uh, 550, 500 puts. Okay, that's cool. And they were coming in in pretty, pretty steady flow. You started seeing uh, some other names, NVIDIA getting some, uh, out of the money puts as well. And by two o'clock or so, I was like, all right, you know what? These things are starting to come in now. Tomorrow should be a premium session. So just keep this in mind. 9.30, I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt. 10.30, we were $3 below supply. By around noon, right? 12.30, one o'clock or so, we, we started finally getting some pretty good aggressive put buying. By 2.30, I went to the post office, dropped off my taxes, and I said, all right, you know, tomorrow is setting up really big premium, right? Like really big premium to the, up, uh, to the, to the downside. And then by four o'clock, you look up and they, they literally, this is by four, this is the last uh, candle of the day. They rallied the queues $3 into the close, which is incredibly frustrating. And the reason why it's incredibly frustrating, if you look at the chart right now on the queues, you say to yourself, well, how, like what saved the market? Again, I get it technically. I understand technically what saved the market. And this was the rising support which I believe this morning was supposed to be challenged and then rally from there. So I get why we bounced, right? I get why we bounced. I don't understand why we bounced so aggressively 
And by the way, you could turn around and say to yourself, well, what the hell just happened? We just rallied $3 off the lows uh, on the queues, but we closed and the bears took control over the 50 day moving average, right? So we're kind of not here, not there. And the, the frustration part from, from my own trading today was uh, Amazon was good. You know, Amazon was good. I caught a piece of a move to the upside. And then the strongest stocks that were still strong, this is when things were coming off the bottom a little bit, there was absolutely no follow through. So I'm sitting there and I'm sitting there. So I lost some money this morning, but I said, you know what? I'm looking at the big picture. It's not anything meaningful. It doesn't make a difference. But you know what? Everything is setting up so good, like so good for tomorrow's session. We're going to get premium and everything, everything's going to be all, all right in the world. And we didn't get that. So the frustration level is I'm looking at charts and there's some good looking charts for tomorrow, right? And the oddest part about the good looking charts for tomorrow, they were the same good looking charts over the weekend. So nothing fundamentally has changed in a name, for example, if God forbid my, uh, my uh, e-signal will work. But there's nothing fundamentally wrong with a chart, for example, like Facebook. Facebook had a good setup for today, if my charts would ever load up. Um, and the moral of the story is it still looks pretty good for tomorrow if we rally. But the problem is, and again, showing charts that are not there, uh, but the problem is when you look at the macro environment of the market, we still have to appreciate that we close underneath supply. And when you go into tomorrow's session, I have some longs for tomorrow. I have some shorts for tomorrow. I have kind of a bit of everything. But if we go into day two again, and there is no commitment to one side of the market, you're going to find yourself in something called the chop cycle, which everybody has gone through. But when it's very, very painfully obvious, it becomes very, very frustrated because you're trying to, you're trying to understand the price action. You turn around and say, it doesn't make sense. But you know what? It makes sense at the same time. And usually you know, I have a good night. I have a good idea what I want to do for the next day. And I have a pretty good game plan. And I'm kind of going really, really non-biased. I, I, this is the first time I think going into uh, tomorrow's session. Let me just reload my e-signal. Um, I think this is the first time going into tomorrow's session that it's going to be a very, very tough time, right? It's going to be a very, very tough time for me to have a bias tomorrow until I really see the whole group, not just one stock, not just two stocks, either the whole group get really, really good to the upside or completely lose today's ranges and start challenging last week's lows. That's the best way to do it. And when you have a market, right, when you have a market that is so non-committal, and that's the best way of saying there was so much lack of commitment going into today's session, you could burn mental equity. You could take like a paper cut. And today, you know, for me, it was a, pretty much a paper cut today, but it's not the point. It was the point that I couldn't figure out the price action. I get what happened last week. I understood prior to last couple of days of the week, we were also three weeks worth of sell buy. So I got all of that part. What frustrated today was the, the random moves back to the upside, the random moves back to the downside, and today's basically point of view was we didn't get enough we didn't get enough confirmation channels to the downside, but yet nothing wanted to confirm back to the upside as well. So it was one of those days that you know you lost some money, you feel okay with it because again you, you didn't keep on pushing the envelope and turn a paper cut into a severed head. So that's part right. That's part for the course. It's the cost of doing business. I get that part, but usually when you look at charts afterwards. And you turn around and say, ah, I got it. Okay. Or here's the dynamics of the market. Or maybe this group was outperforming everything else. And all I got today, literally as looking at a bunch of charts today, all I got today was a lot of confusion. And the one thing that I've always maintained for years and years and years, right? You don't have to have the answers for everything, right? right? Like I really don't have the answers going into tomorrow. I think I'm going to wait for a lot of data. I get that the bulls failed to reclaim back-to-back -back days, the 50-day moving average. That's not a good thing. But at the same time, these random spikes into the close now, three sessions in a row, regardless if we were down today or not, three sessions in a row in a row is, is really got me thinking. So my question going into tomorrow's session, again, this is a very rhetorical question. There's no possible way you could answer it until you actually see tomorrow's session. Well, what the hell is going on, right? Like literally, what the hell is going on? And it's, there is no answer for that. But sometimes, and again, I don't care how long you're trading, 
uh, what your experience level is, the size of your account, what you've been through in the market. Sometimes you just got to take a little bit of step back and say, I need more, right? I need more confirmation. I need more data. I need to see the whole, right? Not some of the parts. I need to see the whole to kind of validate a better opinion. So when you look at a channel, for example, like a Facebook, right, to the upside, it looks pretty good, right? Amazon today, right? Amazon today had really positive notes and had a pretty big move. And again, you can see another continuation channels and it had weekly uh, 3,300 calls come in. So right, you, you, you can make a case, hey, you know what? We are resilient right now. The sellers are tired. You can see that by spikes into the close, but at the same time, you can turn around and say, well, not so fast. We've been selling off for three weeks. We had a dead cat bounce. We reclaimed the 50-day moving average. We lost the 50-day moving average. We put in a lower high from Friday's close, yada, yada, yada. We're about to retest the lows. All to be determined. So sometimes, folks, you got to throw up the hands and say, look, I don't know. I have no idea. And I'm okay with that. You know, if you start believing in yourself that you can solve solve questions, right? Have the answers for everything. You're deceiving yourself. It's an ego thing, right? It's trying to convince somebody else that you're right, that you're perfect. We're not right. We're not perfect. Okay, we're human beings. We're going to F up, right? We're going to F up a lot. And sometimes you're going to have sessions that you don't understand, that you don't have a, a firm understanding of where the pulse is, right? You, you see it. You try to accept it. You try to wrap your head around it. But, and the, but at the end of the day, you're still probably more clueless when the day ended than the day started. So going into tomorrow's session, I'm delta neutral, man. I really am. I'm delta neutral. Um, I'm okay with today's loss. I'm okay with that. Um, I made some money on Amazon and I lost a little bit of money on GameStop, which ironically is up $10 for my entry. And I lost a little bit of money on Zoom because I, you know, it just got rejected as well. So monetary wise, it wasn't a big deal. Mentally wise, it was a big deal because again, I went from really good premium setup back to the downside tomorrow into who the hell knows. Let's see what happens. So let's talk about today's session. Um, and again, it, it's it started off okay. There was, there was nothing wrong with today's session, right? So I put in a bunch of, and here's my morning notes. I'll give the bulls the benefit of the doubt for the first two candles of the day. Uh, after the queues reclaimed the 326 levels, any close beneath that is bearish, right? So we got to close below uh, 326. Uh, longer they build above is bullish. Um, it's Monday morning, no need to rush, let this all play out. So I started putting in pivots, right? I started putting in pivots to the upside and Zoom, this is, you know, again, this is where, here, here's one of my, uh, here's my second trade of the day. Uh, Amazon was my first. So Zoom, um, I bought the 310. So what happened was it went to 310, went back to 308. So the second entry was 310, right? So I get long, I get long Zoom, it goes up like nothing, it goes up like 50 cents and right away gets slammed. And I was like, look, once the level gets slammed, I'm okay with that. Maybe there's a reload seller, I'm okay with it. Took a dollar loss, moved on. Uh, Facebook, 317 needs to build. I still think Facebook needs to rebuild 350, uh, 317. Apple never got close. Peloton never got close. NVIDIA never got close. Uh, good job for all you guys who traded Funko. This wasn't a name that I was trading. But for all you guys who did, great job. Funko, 25 needs to build. Here was Funko, right? Here was Funko. It took out the 25, took out 25 and a half. Went to 2617. If you traded it, God bless. I did not. It's not really my thing. Uh, PRMW. Uh, triggered right at the close. I still like this chart. Uh, PRMW 1740 needs to build. It literally closed that uh, right on the close. I still like it. I still definitely, definitely like it uh, into tomorrow's session. There's a big premium, excuse me, there's a big uh, macro channel coming up on the Feb uh, 8 channel. So keep an eye on that if you are long uh, into the overnight. Uh, and Amazon, right? For experienced traders only, 3260 needs to build. So I got long Amazon. And what did it do? Instantly dropped like 10 points against me, right? Like I'm talking about this is how my day was going. So it it, it it dropped 10 points against me in seconds. And then it rallied seven, eight points instantly, blah, blah, blah. So I took some sales. I was like, look, I have no idea what the hell's going on today. I'm so confused. Amazon's trading a five, six dollar spread. And as soon as I sold, they ran up another 20. So I already knew right away this just wasn't my day. But again, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. So I made some money on Amazon, lost some money on Zoom. Um, so I said to myself, I'm not getting anywhere, but you know what? It's okay. Let the market play out. I'll get something better. Netflix never got there. Um, you know, take on the way up. 
And then I started putting in pivots to the upside, 593 on the upside of Tesla. And I'll show you a downside pivot as well. Uh, GameStop looks great on paper, right? Went to 185. Not for me, it didn't. So here was GameStop, right? Here was GameStop. So it took out the 70, right? It took out the 70 and put in a high of 171 and retraced. Usually when they go back through that high in the second entry, usually good things are gonna happen. So I buy it on the second entry and it goes up and it goes up 50 cent. Like literally, it goes like, like nothing followed through. Today. The strongest names didn't follow through. And then the stock, so I sell it, I lose two bucks on the trade. Um, and then the stock goes down and then the stock goes down, what, five? Okay, all right, cool. And then I look at, you know, I look at it two hours later and it's at 72. And then it goes down another $4, right? And then yada, 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 it, it runs up like six into the close. So you had to stay, you, you literally had to be in GameStop for 19 hours uh, to get this move. What do, I, what do I need to put 19 entries to get, to get this trade? So again, you can see how my day was going. And this is where I turned around and said, you know what? I'm good, right? I'm good. I don't need to bleed all day. Um, I'm good for the day. You know, I gave back some money. I'm okay with that. Paper cut, paper cut, paper cut is better than severed head. And I'm okay for tomorrow. Biggest problem for me tomorrow is, well, now I have no idea what the hell's going on. Uh, so that's that there. Funko on deck. Uh, good job for everybody who took uh, Tesla 569 for bills below can flush. Again, size buyers come in for the 500, 490s and went all the way down to uh, 561. I still like the macro level here. And this is and this is my this is what I was talking about. Nothing wants to go down, but nothing wants to go up, right? All the down pivots are still valid, but nothing's really going down, nothing's really going up. And that was basically, and that was basically the reality, right? You had, you had Tesla coming back in for you guys who caught Tesla, good job. But that was the reality. It's a very frustrating day. It was no continuity, no follow-through, a lot of sitting, a lot of a uh, data uh, grabbing, a lot of patience. But you know what? That's the game. If if success was linear, everybody would be rich and everybody would have such a fun and easy time doing this, but it's not. Hopefully we'll get some sort of clarity tomorrow. But if not, again, patience is the game. You don't need to trade every single day. Stay in control. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. I'll see you all tomorrow.